take in a minute because we're gonna have a little video. I hope everything is working all right. Everything should be good. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Happy Oyster Show. I'm your host, Bart Burke, and we haven't seen each other in quite a while. Uh, five weeks to be exact. Uh, are we going to be going for another five weeks? I don't know. We are right now on a week-to-week -week basis. You're going to have to subscribe in order to find out if we're going to be live t next week or not. So don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. If you like what you see, put up that fat thumbs up. We really appreciate your support. Thank you guys so much. While we're on support, uh, I guess I got to start right off with work. Work up at Cornell Cooperative Extension up at the Marine Hatchery uh, in South Olden, Cedar Beach, has been perfect. Everything has been just aligning. The stars have been aligning. The clams have been uh, behaving. They've been growing. Things are just going swimmingly. Uh, some spat on shell that got released into the uh, southern south shore here. Uh, we've got new clams coming along that are masses and everything is good and i am ecstatic of what's going on up there uh again cornell cooperative marine extension has been a sponsor of the show for quite a while and uh, i really am personally indebted to them for changing my life chris pickerel greg rivara kim Tetro, these guys are the epicenter of the oyster industry here on Long Island. And again, the mission is to put Long Island on the map for oysters. And these guys are in the forefront. And they put out a video here recently, uh, Cornell Cooperative. If you're not familiar with them, please go over and subscribe to them. We're gonna show you, I'm gonna show you this video and uh, I think you guys are gonna really, really enjoy it. Let me turn this around. Yeah, that works, that works, right? Let me put this to full screen. Like that, right? Oh, that works, right? Looking good, looking good, looking good. And then we're gonna hit this. There we go. Enjoy. Oysters have long been part of the history of Long Island. Today, oysters still play an important role in our economy, our environment, and to our communities. Cornell Cooperative Extension of Suffolk County's Marine Program has been working with oysters and the people who grow them since its inception in 1985. We make community aquaculture opportunities available through our SPAT program, help commercial growers get started in this industry, operate numerous shellfish hatcheries and nurseries across Suffolk County in support of restoration efforts, and bring it all together by cultivating stewardship and support through our Back to the Bays initiative. Let's jump in and take a closer look at these efforts and learn more about oysters and aquaculture. SPAT, the term for larval shellfish before they set, and also the acronym for CCE Marine Program Suffolk Project and Aquaculture Training. This program enables everyday people to learn how to grow their own oysters. Kim Tetro is the director of SPAT, and his enthusiasm for aquaculture and endearing personality has made him a legend in the growing community with a local following of hundreds of SPAT members. Well, the SPAT program to me, I've been at Cornell for 25 years now. The entire time I've been at Cornell, I've understood our mandate which is to teach people things that put them to work that improve our world. And SPAT is that incarnate. So now, none of them are commercial, even though SPAT has really st started out about 15 oyster companies to date in the, in the 25 years. Uh, the, the, the importance of the SPAT program is that it teaches people to be good stewards of, of the environment as a whole. And because we're on the area we are in, uh, it's very marine based. So we're mm -hmm. a clearinghouse of information. We're here year round. We offer year round opportunities for people to be involved. And because of that, I've, I've had members, SPAT has, is going into its 21st year. And I have members that have been with me for 20 years of that consistently, which is phenomenal. Why would anyone have that kind of tenaciousness 
because every time somebody comes here, they can learn something new, and they can do actual hands-on work that does benefit the community. I saw something in the paper um, that, about this bad program, and I thought this would be something I'd really like to be, interested, I would be interested in. I wanted to do something for the environment, and I wanted to do something that makes me happy, and I have a passion for, and I have a passion for this. And it's very rewarding, giving back the bag. We're proud to say some folks have gotten so smitten with working with oysters through our SPAT program that they have gone on to graduate to become commercial growers. Our SPAT alumni include Southwold Bay Oysters, Yenicott Oysters, Happy Oyster Company, and Founders Oysters, just to name a few. I was a member of SPAT for several years and learned how to grow oysters through the Cornell Cooperative Extension uh, for our own personal use and to share with family and friends. Um, and I believe it was through a newspaper article we read about the Suffolk Aquaculture Lease Program and decided at that point we were ready to make a change in our careers and wanted to apply to become commercial oystermen and move permanently out to Southold and grow oysters as our full-time job. Spat alumni or not, CCE Marine is here to help anyone looking to get involved with commercial aquaculture. Greg Rivara has been an invaluable resource to the local growing community for decades helping newbies navigate permitting processes and troubleshooting problems with new and seasoned farmers alike. My, my job was to help them get started and also to help the existing shellfish farmers, which were there maybe a few dozen at the time, maybe not even that many, solve problems, expand maybe. They might have had an oyster disease episode, and I went and worked with them, sent the samples to the appropriate uh, folks, and basically helped them solve problems and make more money. Rosalie's is Ian Weil. We uh, have Little Creek Oysters in Greenport uh, and an oyster farm in the Connie Bay. Going back to even before the farm started, uh, when we first took a look, they give you a, a whole map of the, the whole bay with 600 little boxes, that, and you're supposed to pick three that are going to make the greatest oysters you could possibly make. And so not really understanding some of, uh, some of the science, some of the... Um, the working challenges of different parts of the bay, you know, it was an incredible resource for me to, to be able to call up Cornell Cooperative Extension. And I remember throwing a map in front of Greg Rivera and saying, okay, give me a couple of areas, you know, at least help me pin it down. I mean, obviously there's no right and wrong spot, but there are spots that were maybe more right for me or more right for what we wanted to do and the gear we wanted to use and this kind of bigger picture. So from that first day where we highlighted a, a short list, down to you know a one week ago asking for information on now that we're in in more advancing we're, we're trying a new technique now that or new to us anyway that um that is meant to enhance the, the quality of our shells and the health of the oysters all of which we get by going back to the, the aquaculture specialist so throughout the process it's been a, a, a regular yeah, regular phone call and email chain for sure Not all oysters are destined to be eaten. A huge part of what CCE Marine does involves spawning and raising shellfish for restoration and population enhancement efforts. Working with local municipalities, government agencies, and various partners and funders, we are able to produce millions of not just oysters, but clams and bay scallops each year that are seeded into both sanctuary sites and open waters annually. Cornell Cooperative Extension Marine Program operates a shellfish hatchery at the Gold Star facility in Huntington to service our western Suffolk communities. Our flagship location in Southfold houses both our original hatchery in operation for nearly 30 years and our newly constructed state-of-the-art hatchery we built as part of the New York State funded Long Island Shellfish Restoration Project. This facility has enabled us to increase our capacity to produce shellfish in a major way. Community engagement is essential to a lot of things, especially positive environmental changes. Our planet is facing many stressors, but resiliency, restoration, and stewardship can help move us in positive directions. 
The Back to the Bays initiative was established to bring meaningful stewardship opportunities to the public and a chance to work side by side with CCE Marine's team of experts and educators to advance coastal and marine restoration projects. Monthly Back to the Bays stewardship sessions are offered, some to the public, some exclusively to members to help us raise shellfish, seed the bays with scallops, deploy spout on shell oyster reefs, and more. If you love oysters, aquaculture, and everything about our marine environment, we encourage you to get involved and be part of our efforts to give back to the bays. Yeah, all right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that because uh, that really tells it like it is right there. Um, where was I going here? I got to turn that to that to that to that. Let's go out and show you some gear modifications that we're going through. I'm going to try to see if this mic thing is going to work now. I'm going to plug it in because I wanted to just go handheld with that phone, but we'll see what happens. You might get a little buzz at first. Green. I should be good, yeah? Happy Oyster Show. That synchronizes everything, I hope. My lips to the camera and all of that uh, when you do that. Uh, you know, with the guy with the thing, you know, when they, that's what the reason they did that is to sync everything together. Regardless. How's everybody doing? Let's go over to check out some gear. Uh, Cornell Cooperative has helped me and taught me in a lot of different things. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, I just wanted to share that video with you guys. I thought it was pretty cool because it shows a lot of the places that I'm at uh, pretty regularly, and uh, I thought it was cool. I thought it was really well produced. Hats off to Cornell Cooperative. Please go over there and share with them and check it out and uh, and whatnot and uh, subscribe. Give them a fat thumbs up, a fat like. All right, we're gonna come over here and over here. Oh, I got all kinds, we got all kinds of neat stuff going on. Let me just put my coffee down. I'm gonna try to put this onto here. I hope that's gonna work like that. As you can tell, I am by myself. D, D, Lee, D, and that's not all bad. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Willard. Good morning, Jimmy. What's happening? Uh, Freddie is good. Freddie is MIA. I haven't seen Freddie in a while, so I believe he's good. Uh, no news is good news, and you know. Ah, there we go. How's that? That works. Oh, yellow ball he makes in a bamboo tree. All right. Um, maybe I should go back the other way. So that way I can see what's going on. That's probably better. Mm -hmm. That isn't too bad, right? I think that's pretty good. Sound is good, everything's good. Thanks guys. All right, so where am I at? Uh, Plastic versus wood. This has been something that has been, um, we're wondering what's going to happen. We have a plastic cage. We have a wood cage. I'll get into this in a second. And we're wondering if there's going to be a taste difference. Now, I think maybe possibly there could be. Maybe not. I don't know. If there is a wood, if I floated... Floated, floated, that's a, that's a technical term. If I float this cage and that cage side by side with the same exact oyster that was hatched at exactly the same time, that was all bup, 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 and we tried to keep all of our constants together, do you think the oyster out of this cage or that cage is gonna taste different? We are gonna find out in 2021 for the season. Uh, if you're not familiar with this, this is a bay box. This is built by Michael Schirmeyer right here in West Hampton Beach, uh, a resident of West Hampton Beach. 
great guy. Uh, now that the COVID restrictions and all of this and all of that, and oh, we're going to have a hell of a good season. I can just smell it. Uh, we just got a couple of things, a couple of hurdles, a couple of things we're jumping through, and everything is all good. Uh, but we'll get Michael on the show, and we'll give him. He's. We're going to give him the accolades that are due to him. He is on a mission to reduce the plastic waste all the way around. Now, me, on the other hand, is the commercial guy, and you know, of course, you know, the commercial guy, he always gets those bad, bad things, bad, bad. Not really, I'm just kidding. The, uh, we use plastic, we use a lot of it, and uh, we are, I, and all of us as oyster farmers, we have to be very conscientious of how we use and the amount that we use, reduce, reuse, and recycle. We use these little zip tie guys right here pretty regularly. And nothing pisses me off more than when I see them on the ground uh, up at spat or this or that. People think these things grow on trees and they do not. Uh, sparingly, but you've got to use them appropriately and smartly. Uh, smartly, another technical term. But we use them for holding on to the floats onto the cages. We might use them to secure the actual cage. Oh, this one's hog ringed. Uh, or we might use them to, okay, to zip ties. We use them, a lot of them. Michaels doesn't use zip ties. So, something to be said here, and we're going to check it out. Uh, I think the concept is cool. I think it's great. And I can't wait to see the results. Are they going to taste different? Who knows? But you know what? We're going to have a lot of fun trying that out. And if it does taste different, then there's something going on here with cedar. If it comes out with a cedar smoky taste, I am going to be like flabbergasted. Obviously, we're going to be able to, you know, that's a unique flavor attribute of that oyster. Oysters grow in different spots, have different tastes. Long Island, big place. Let's put Long Island on the map for oysters. Um, if that is true, then I'm going out to my garden and I'm going to go whack out a bunch of garlic and I'm going to start throwing garlic in my oyster traps, uh, oyster cages, and see what happens then. Um, who knows, you know? I don't know. I thought I'd share that one with you. If you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up. Please come on over and subscribe. I'm supposed to say that more, I've been told. Whatever. <laughs> Next. Um, I'm still on the plastic gig. We make a lot of our gear. We use some floating cages for some seed and from smaller stuff. When you're using seed and smaller stuff, they have to come on and off of the line pretty regularly because they have to get tended to, meaning they have to get shaken and uh, cleaned and sorted by size and whatnot. And I'm always looking at different ways of getting them on and off the line and what holds it better on the line and what lasts. If you want to, and you got to test this stuff, you can't just go out there and put the whole farm in one shot on, on something that you think might work. Because what you think might work and what really does happen are two totally different things. The waves are constantly doing this, so it's constantly chafing, wearing on something. And... When you have a cage like that with this, this kind of a, this is, right here is where it'll wear. It might wear down here. But what I've been experimenting with for the last couple of years here is this monofilament. And I've got two different flavors here. I've got this one here. This is pretty thick stuff. And we, I have a special tool behind me that clamps this closed. This is our standard big clip that we have a lot of. And I've put this onto that and it has worked phenomenal. It doesn't wear here, the water lubricates that. It doesn't wear when I loop it around the bag, that lubricates as well. Uh, really tough. The one time I did have a problem and I cheated was I wrapped it all the way around the loop and I wrapped around this thing and I used only one I put half of the end in and half of the other end in on the other end, and then I crimped it two times. And it did come apart on the one side uh, because I cheaped out without using two ferrules. Now the, the way to go is two ferrules, which is what I did after that anyway. I only did it on one. Uh, 
And uh, so you put a furl on that end and a furl on the other end, and you're all good to go. Awesome. Thick, zesty. I'm having problems getting this. I probably could get it online. I'm not sure of the test, pound test on this. It was a gift. I only did 25 bags. All of them withstood a lot of abuse and misuse, and they're still going strong after three years. Hats off. Really good. So, of course, where do I get this? I'm working on it. But in the meantime, I went and saw my buddies at the, at the tackle shop, and they gave me this stuff. This stuff is a little bit thinner, as you can see, considerably thinner. This is 450 pound test leader line. These clips are 450 pound test crimpers. So now if I did the same thing like I did with this, with this <clears throat> in a maybe not so rough area, um, not like it's, you know, like doing this, all the beeping, I mean, you know, maybe if it's just doing this, you know, not this, you know what I mean? When it's doing that, it's ugly. Uh, and it just keeps on wiggling and wiggling. But this lasted no problem. Would this last no problem in that situation? I don't know. It's considerably lighter weight, a little less costly, a little easier to work with. It doesn't weigh down the bag. A lot of advantages to a little bit lighter weight. Less is more? Maybe. We have to test this. This is going to be tested for 2021. Isn't that cool? you guys might like that. I have one more test for this year. This is a biggie big because this one's going to save labor big time on cages and cage manufacturing. Let me switch over to here a little bit. Down there. Good. Yeah, that isn't too bad. All right, this is our standard cage that we're using right now. It has the bridle system all on it, and everything is cool. Uh, we went over this the other day, I think, right? We you unwrap, unwrap, undo, undo. Here's where the part is, right? This thing here, this latch, as you can see. A lot of labor goes into cutting each one of these little things and making the little hooks and then bending it and threading it through and doing all of that. And then what happens then when you have it, when you start to disassemble the cage, you have what we call tops, middles, and legs. This thing is glued. I painted it with the latch on there. It kind of got a little stuck. Okay, so here's your top, right? So the top goes on... A, and here it is, and these things flop all over the place, and it's like, you know, you put these into, again, you're in the boat, you're small, so you kind of stand them up over here, and they catch on, those, those little things catch on everything possible. Number one. Number two, you still, you're limited because this has to be a top, because the top is connected with hinge with string. It does keep a nice, neat unit. I'll give you that. But there's three components right now. You got the metal, you got the one with the legs on it, and you got the top. And they can't really, you can't really, you get where I'm coming from here? So, thought about it. Long and hard, and we, I came up with a new solution. It also might be who, because of the, this solution is also, I think, will work also in the deep water as well as shallow water. I'm kind of looking at these guys in the well fleet, and they do these racks and these shelves, and it's not very, it's not, there's not, you know, at high, the tide goes up and down a lot in well fleet. So, at low tide, they can walk out there, do their thing, and then at high tide, the water comes over the whole shooting match and covers it. A couple of things going on there. Uh, a whole nother shelf. Animal husbandry. We're talking about gear right now, and that's where we're going to stay focused. But what I'm trying to get at is that different sites dictate different gear. 
from heavy mono, lighter mono, legs, no legs, wrap, bump, wood, no wood, on and on. Okay? All right. So what is the change that we have made? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Working on gear. The gear pile is starting to go down. Uh, and I think this is going to be a good idea. Let me put this over here so you can see a little better. Heavier duty or rubber. This is stuff is thick, thick, opposed to the thin, thin. Six millimeter and nine millimeter? I can't remember. They make the rubber stuff in two sizes. This is the thicker stuff. I've changed it, the cleat, the clip. And we've only been two pieces. Now the top is completely separate from everything else. So the top could be changed from boat to boat to boat to cage to cage to cage. It is now separate. It's not like so hanging off. Those things aren't going to catch as badly, I hope. It is something to fall overboard a little bit more easily, but I will pass me on. And this is brand new, man. I just did this. This is, just came off the press of you. Yes? Not yesterday. It was yesterday. Day before. The, I'm bowl, putting the bowling on one side, it goes down, so now I can also adjust it on the other side as well. This goes down so far and so hard and so tight, and you can adjust it accordingly with this clip. I kind of had to modify the clip a little bit. Sound is on. Oh, you know why the sound is on? This mic fell off. Now I lost the little thingy, too, that went on there. Uh-oh. So anyway, so you get the idea. Sorry about Thank you, Jimmy, for telling me that. Uh, I think it's going to work pretty well. What it's going to help us to do is that it's going to, I'm looking for that little mic clip thing. Stand by. Nope. Maybe simple. Er. Still need a bridle on this. Less labor than the clatch. How many of these should I do? Six? Let's see what happens with six. Let's see what happens with three. Let's see what happens. Uh, we got one done. We'll go from there. Modification there. Modification there. Clips. Monofilament. All of the above. Oh, um, the, I had some comments the other day about how do you get your clips on there and is that really going good? Another uh, 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 something that we started three years ago and it works really well is the copper suede onto the, we make our own of these guys out of, out of three quarter inch uh, copper tubing. And, uh, and then we made a little crimper tool for it to be able to smush it. So it's very, this, this is very similar to the other system that you know is store bought. Uh, does this slip? No. We have had one slip at one time. I'll show you where it looks like. I thought I had it here. What did I do with it? Only because we were anchored to it and it kept yanking on it and it just moved it ever so much. I had it. I don't know what the hell I did with it. Do -do -do -do. You can see it just it just pulled out just ever so much. I put took it out of service. The other thing with these clips is we've had some of them that have bent, uh, but this part doesn't fail. The clip might bend, the that's it, or the rope might break. But the the, the it's pretty tough to to break it, pull it out of that. The only reason it pulled out of there is we had it anchored to a cage, and we just kind of kept it, the boat was anchored to it. It was pretty rough, and uh, it did pull just ever so much. You could tell because the rope was cleaner where it was, but it did not fail. It was and it was pulling on there for a couple of hours. So uh, we did take that one out of service. That was it. So that's a gear situation for uh, 
for 2000 and uh, there's some other failed ones. Out of all of the clips that we've used and stuff, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, six of them that have failed, and out of hundreds, six. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's a pretty good success rate. I hope you guys had fun today. When are we coming on next? Next Saturday. Let's see what we can do for next Saturday. Uh, please come on over, subscribe. Things are loosening up. Things are definitely... Uh, COVID restrictions are lightning, and thank goodness. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's being cool. I hope everybody's staying happy. What's that? Oh, and you too, Jim. <laughs> I want everybody to be cool. I want everybody to be kind. I want everybody to be happy. And of course, eat me. We will see you next week. Please share it with your friends. Check us out. Have fun. Love you guys. We'll see you next week.